So in this webinar, we are going to discuss our findings about uh, how to get a good score on IELTS as a speaking test or speaking section. And uh, we try to just exchange all the necessary valuable tips on uh, performing well in this part of the IELTS exam. Uh, so do we have any particular difference between the academic and general modules of the IELTS exam when it comes to speaking? Do you have any information? As far as uh, I know, uh, there is a difference between the type of questions. So, so, so what, what about you? Uh, I think the structure of the examination are the same uh, they have mm -hmm. both they have both uh, three part of speaking mm -hmm. test and you know in each actual task they are supposed to talk about something but i don't think that the procedure is different but something that could be different maybe i'm not sure about it is about uh, the level of strict mm -hmm. uh, strictness and yeah, strictness and yeah, the level of difficulties of the examinations. Mm -hmm. For example, maybe the, in an academic test, test, uh, you're supposed to show up better, much better, in order to get the same score. So that does not reflect any difference in the structure of the exam, but yeah. actually in your own performance. So technically, there is no difference between them. Uh, academic and general modules uh, when it comes to speaking I mean the speaking section of the IELTS exam they are all actually the same and uh, about the uh, oh, format of this uh, exam so is it a kind of computer-based examination when it comes to speaking no, it's not. Uh huh. So, it's a face-to-face -face interview with the examiner. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, does the interview or is the interview recorded or not? Yes. Yes. So the interview is recorded. Yes. But um, for the sake of assessment. Yes. And. And. Between your questions, let me raise raise another point that uh, you know I'm I'm just this is just my understanding or perception of the IELTS examination, but uh, it is not written anywhere, I suppose. But uh, according to my own experience, I think the way you enter the room of the examination is really important. Uh, actually, the way through which you start speaking, you know, at first you are. Uh, supposed to greet the examiner, maybe he's or she's mm -hmm. se really serious, and but you shouldn't, right. for example, lose you lose your confidence. And you know, mm -hmm. where you stand, you know, sit on the chair, and you know, and there are some books mm -hmm. in which it is suggested or recommended uh, to actually let to ask the, for example, examiner for sitting on the chair and the rest mm -hmm. of the process. Good point. Yes. How you greet the examiner is the first thing that you act upon as soon as you enter the examination room. So, and also you can create a good impression. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, you should create a good impression on the examiner by your first action. That is how you greet him or her. And it's going to have a good positive influence uh, upon your own performance later on so it's important to take that seriously as you said and uh, so uh, the duration of the whole part speaking part is about 11 to 14 minutes and so it just fluctuates uh, between this uh, uh, extremes that is 11 to 14 and uh, so as I said as Sanson said you need to create a good impression and <coughs> that is <coughs> that part 
as in some websites and also institutions it is referred to part zero that is actually because it takes place before the uh, part one before part one of the IELTS exam uh, in which your identity is checked or identification card is checked by the examiner that's why it's called part zero because technically it's not uh, a very major part of your uh, speaking test and uh, so uh, is it necessary to have eye contact with the examiner Definitely. yes it is mm -hmm. so you need to take care of the uh, non-verbal communication as well as verbal communication and also or even actually having a smile on your face so how about the possibility for you to ask some questions from the examiner is it possible to ask him or her some questions for example in return yeah it is whenever you think that something yeah I did that I, I don't okay. think so that yeah if you don't get any question it's better to ask him or her uh, rather than just answering wrong um, let's say wrong answer give a wrong answer uh, to that question you're right but yeah, in, I meant in, I meant asking for what you're talking about I'm sorry it's also, what you're talking about is asking for clarification I didn't mean that yeah uh -huh. for example uh, the the examiner asks you about your uh, hometown and uh, you answer him or her and is it right to uh, ask him or her some questions What's about you? their home hometown not at all uh -huh, okay so, yeah. yeah so you should not ask the examiner any question about actually any personal question so you are not in the position to ask any question you know uh, yeah. if that is for for the sake of clarification that's okay but you should not ask any question any personal question Sazan, uh, did you want to say something? Uh, no, you, you just you yourself clarified the point. Mm -hmm. That's okay. all. Right. Okay. Uh, so, part one, uh, which is a kind of personal information or yeah. question and answer, uh, just initiated by them. Uh, examiner lasting for around four to five minutes and uh, so what are some typical questions that the examiner asks you do you know what type of music do you listen to what do you do what, what's your job what's your specialty or I don't know maybe what's the feel of your study yeah what's your hobby Mm -hmm. What are you interested Great. in? Your nationality. First of all, your name. You know, it starts with your name. And uh, actually greeting generally. Uh, the, uh, the examiner introduces himself or herself to you by saying, for example, Good afternoon. My name is uh, blah, blah, blah. Or, uh, so could I have your name, please? And... Uh, so this is the way that any in IELTS interview generally starts and uh, so uh, there is a point when you want to address the examiner uh, for example if uh, is it right to say that for example the examiner's first name is Jack is it right to address him Mr. Jack Uh, no. I don't know. Uh -huh. I'm not sure. I don't think so. It's better to, for example, sir or madam. Uh, okay, yeah. So, uh, if you want, this is Mr. or is a, or Mrs., you know, or Ms. Uh, is a kind of title or even doctor, actually, is a title. So, remember that in English, you should not use a title for first names. With yeah. first names, for example, that's why you cannot say Mr. Jack. It must be Mr. Smith, for example, Mr. Wilson, for example, but not 
first name you know and is it okay to use contraction forms for example can't uh, rather than gonna I wanna for example I wanna do that instead of I want to do that or I uh, I'm gonna do that or these are contractions no they're not formal mm -hmm. so Arash what do you think um, it's better if you're taking uh, especially the academic uh, test mm -hmm. It's better to not use that. Uh, yeah. But I'm not sure if well, it is uh, forbidden or not. Well, as a matter of fact, not only is it forbidden, but also it is encouraged to use contractions in the speaking test because it shows that you are fluent. And generally an interview, this interview is not a formal interview. This is intended to be an informal interview. So here it's better to use contractions. For example, instead of saying my name is uh, Hussein, it's better to say my name's Hussein. This is a contraction. It's better to use contractions as much as you can. I did search about that, so I just do not... Uh, or verbalize my own ideas no I'm just quoting so it's better to use contractions and even some informal uh, linking words as far as you can but a very important point is that you should not copy some uh, model answers the same is true about for example writing your writing as in the case of writing you should not for example just copy some uh, collocations prefabricated sentences because you might think that actually these can give you a good mark again here you should not uh, use some models or model answers are you following me yeah yes okay so, uh, as I said, uh, also, uh, for example, you your name is Arabic or Persian or some other language in some other languages, and you do have a nickname in English. Is it correct to, for example, ask the examiner call you with your nickname in English? For example, my name is Hussein, but you can call me Henry. Is it correct to, to, to invite the examiner to call you with your nickname? Yes. Yeah. Yes, very good. And also, if you really mean that or have a nickname in English, you can actually... Uh, ask or encourage the examiner to call you with your nickname in English these are some uh, details but I think actually we should consider the details so do not give any advice to the examiner as well for example you must go to my for example I, I, I was born in that city you must see that it's so beautiful and because this is a this is considered uh, as a piece of advice this is not the, the 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 exact way that you should just interact with the examiner so do not give any advice uh, to the examiner and uh, how about the pronunciation of your hometown uh, is there anything you would like to share with us about that? No importance. <laughs> I think that's a name. The way you uh -huh. pronounce it, uh, there is no rule for that, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Arash? Yeah, as far as I know, but uh, Sasan is right. But um, I don't know. I think it's better to say that I was born in your home country name, like... like uh, Poland or Iran or somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, it's so important.
to pronounce your hometown in English. Because if you don't do that, that will, uh, let's say, give you a negative uh, mark. You will get a negative mark for that. You must be able to pronounce your hometown in English. Uh, what about part two? Part two is a kind of talk or monologue, generally, lasting for three to four uh, minutes. And as you know, you are given a topic card or cue card, and you you have almost one minute to brainstorm over the question, or uh, let's say question tags, of course, there are, in order to get ready for a uh, monologue or a speech lasting for around two minutes so uh, let me see is it necessary to go through a kind of brainstorming or outlining necessarily for sure mm -hmm. yeah because so it, it, it it's it's it saves you uh, lots of time because otherwise uh, you will get disorganized and it, it's not a good point. Uh, sorry, yes. Ash, you said that it's not a good idea to brainstorm? Yes. Uh, or Ash says that it's, a good, it's definitely a good idea. So oh, he's positive yeah. about it. And I think the way yeah. you answer the question is really important. And, you know, just the quality of, I think, English is not the only point that could affect the, ex uh, the examiner for example uh, people are different they have different different school of thought or maybe different points of view I think how uh, how professional you answer the question is something that is crucial yeah professional uh, it's better to say relevant not professional yeah but you know sometimes for example he asks you about some suggestion or some uh, solutions for for example for any problem such as traffic jam or air pollution if you give up something mm -hmm. which is not that uh, problem solving it means that you are not attracting the examiner you're just so sure. making some sentences even if you have used many perfect vocabulary mm -hmm. yeah but definitely technically in this part of your IELTS speaking test you are not just uh, asked to give some solutions to some problems. Yeah, that's the relevant part three. Yeah, yeah. It's in this part generally uh, you are uh, supposed to give some uh, to explain about some experiences, your own opinions about some general topics. You know, it's a kind of experiential, uh, let's say, narration something that has happened to you and your reaction to that or your feedback about it okay yeah, and can i raise one point sure about these parts do not think that uh, you will be given only complicated questions also be ready for some simple questions simple. yeah absolutely yes uh, you should be ready for any kind of question but not necessarily, as you said, sophisticated or complicated questions. And, uh, okay, that brainstorming can ease the process of, as you said, getting organized and just uh, being confident in that, in those two minutes. And, and what about, uh, yes? So sorry for interruption. Uh, there's one more point about part two, as you are talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, this is something that refers to my own experience. If you want to go further, or let's say uh, upper than seven score, it is compulsory in my point of view to use some uh, some perfect structures such as uh, not only but also although even though you know these are some structures. If you do not use them, you can never go up uh, go further than seven. Yes, the use of linking linking words. Yeah, you can never go for. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. But for sure, if you are actually an advanced learner, 
or advanced English student for sure it automatically comes to surface you know uh, you you just interact with the examiner for almost a quarter of an hour and in that period of time you must be it's a must that you automatically use those linking words or conjunctions otherwise you are not an advanced learner yeah. Okay. Did you uh, get my point? Yes, you're right. But sometimes, in the stressful atmosphere of the examination, uh, students mm -hmm. tend to use some simple sentences in order to reduce the uh, the number of mistakes that they make, and that's one of the reasons that encourages them to. That's why. Go through that's it. why I said automatically, uh -huh. not forcefully. Automatically means you do not just force yourself to to use those words because actually uh, as i said uh, do not try to use some model answers you know in a mechanical way uh, because this is against fluency or a smoothness of a speech so uh, the the third part actually is a kind of discussion lasting for around uh, three to four or four to five minutes and uh, uh, as a kind of follow-up conversation uh, in response to part two so uh, are all the three parts equally important or you think that for example one part is more important or two parts more important than others I think the last two parts are more important than the first part. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, Yeah, Arash is right, but we need to keep it in, in our mind that subconsciously, first part, first part is crucial as well because it refers or it has something to do with first effect, which is a psychological... Uh, first impression. If, yeah. We need to take mm -hmm. care of it. As a matter of fact, all the three parts are equally important. So there is no distinction between them, according to my research. And uh, uh, yeah, I, but as Sasson said, because the test is rather subjective, not objective, if you happen to uh, create a good impression, actually the rest of your performance will be even noticed better in the eyes of the examiner okay so uh, as I said you should use the, li uh, the linking words or conjunctions but in a natural way and uh, we have different types of conjunctions on LELB society we do have a post including almost 90% of all conjunctions with examples and definitions uh, as I said uh, it's an it's not a good idea to memorize some model answers and uh, how about the pace or speed of your speech is it necessary for you actually necessarily to speak so fast or do you get a low mark if you speak uh, slowly uh, the point is that uh, there is a huge difference between fluency and speaking mm -hmm. fast and these are mm -hmm. points good. which are mostly actually uh, mixed by some students mm -hmm. and it's better to actually use uh, the words and you know try to be um, so use different words rather than being so fast because fastness or being fast has no value and point for you but being fluent and without any interruption speaking without interruption is something that is important but it doesn't mean that you need to actually expedite the, you know your speaking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good point by coherence i mean actually you must be understandable it means there are, what you say is must be logical so coherence flow and smoothness must be taken care of and uh, if you just 
try to consider these three elements your language product uh, turns out to be fluent and you maybe actually you're not necessarily a fast speaker because sometimes if you try to be really fast that could be really confusing in the eyes of the examiner and uh, so all right well I just covered all of the points that I wanted to share with you so if you have any further points to add or uh, yeah it's all yours thank you oh, thank you so day. much Thank you.